we all saw Homelander kill a human in broad daylight unprovoked. Is he going to be held accountable? And Homelander should stand trial just like anybody else, and a jury of his peers will decide that outcome. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is my full video for The Boys Gen V Episode 7. There were a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. We only have one episode left too, so there's probably going to be a couple of big cameos from the regular main Boys series. They also said that the finale is meant to directly set up The Boys Season 4. There were a couple moments during this episode where they referenced some storylines and plot that will take place during The Boys Season 4. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing more videos for The Boys Season 4 after Gen V is done. We'll start hearing a little bit more about that pretty soon. Careful for spoilers for the episode. If you haven't seen it yet, we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments, starting with the episode title, Sick, which is mostly just a reference to the anti-superhero virus that Dr. Cardoza is testing on the superheroes and then winds up getting to Victoria Newman at the end of the episode. The actual opening scene is Dr. Cardoza making the compound V virus more contagious. As he says, it requires direct contact or bodily fluid exchange. So you have to like cough in someone's face or like literally spit on them some sort of transmission of blood, like if you got into a giant brawl with someone like they're teasing, there's going to be in the finale. It's just as deadly as it was last week, even though the Dean is trying to make it more deadly, but she says she wants to make it airborne so that it's even more contagious and will kill all superheroes. We talked about this in previous episodes, so it's not meant to be a big revelation or anything like that, like she wants to kill all superheroes. They didn't give all these superheroes names, they just called this girl Bald Girl, this guy Andy, so we don't know what all their powers were. There's also this weird thing in the episode where they try to make Dr. Cardoza seem a little more sympathetic by having him oppose Dean Shetty when she wants to make it airborne. Like it sounds like he figured out what her plan was a while ago and he's been waiting to confront her on it, but he hasn't gone to Vought yet because he legit thinks that they'll kill him because he created this. Here's the thing though, if Stan Edgar were still in charge of Vought, like he's not in charge of Vought right now, at least that we know of, he'd probably be very interested in something like this, like a fatal anti-superhero weapon, a deterrent that he could just put on ice in some deep vault somewhere if he needed to use it, if someone was too powerful to kill or control the old-fashioned way. But I think the whole idea with the doctor is they want to make him seem like this misguided scientist who's just thinking all about the research and not like the moral ramifications or like the larger ramifications of what he's actually doing. Either way, he kind of came off like a dirtbag, so I didn't feel too sorry for him when Victoria Newman popped his head at the end of the episode. And even though Dean Shetty keeps hyping this up as being super powerful, like killing all superheroes, I still don't think that it's going to be powerful enough to actually kill Homelander. Like, that's literally how powerful he's meant to be. The only person on the boys I think that's going to be strong enough to kill him will be Ryan. I've talked about this a lot in previous videos. Like, they want him to seem like he is almost unkillable. That's why Victoria Newman isn't supposed to be able to pop his head. Like, she's super powerful. She can pop anyone's heads except for Homelander. That's one of the darker parody aspects of the whole boys universe, like the comics and the TV show. What would you do if there was a Superman who was unkillable, like he was invincible and he was evil? How would you stop someone like that if there was no way to actually kill them? Victoria Newman doesn't want to kill all superheroes, but she does want to neutralize, probably also eventually get rid of Homelander or use a deterrent against him, even if she doesn't plan on actually using it against him. You don't actually have to kill Homelander, you just have to make him think that you might be able to kill him. That's why at the end of the episode, she tells Cardoza, is it okay if I steal your line there, compassionate control? She wants to use the virus as a method for control, but in her own personal way, like behind the scenes, not in like the public way that Vought is planning on using it. She clearly has no intention of taking it to Vought or informing them that it actually exists. One of the other big revelations of the episode was that Dean Shetty's daughter and her husband were on the flight Homelander destroyed during season one. The infamous flight. It was a great episode. Everyone remain calm. Stay in your seats. Everything's under control. Maeve also threatened to use the footage from that against him in season two. They actually confirmed my theory about Dean Shetty. Like she referenced that she used to have a daughter and my theory was is that she died because of some collateral damage incident, but they made it a much bigger thing in this episode than I thought it was going to be. Like it was Homelander who was directly responsible for their deaths and why she infiltrated the college and wants to use this virus to kill all superheroes. She goes on and on about the whole collateral damage of it all. They actually got into this during The Boys Season 1, where they're talking to these other cities, like other governmental figures, saying that we'll bring superheroes to your town, but they also cause so much collateral damage that the joke of it is that it almost winds up costing other cities money. Vought tries to sell them on bringing superheroes to their city and then using the superhero to make more money for the local government, but it winds up costing them more money because of all the damage that they cause. 
This is one of the main reasons why Stan Edgar was trying to phase the company out of the superhero business, so to speak, like basically mothball all superheroes, but in a much less bloody way. He wanted to start selling the temporary compound V to the military through the government and it'd be way more profitable for them because it would not cause the same collateral damage. There's also just a lot of daily headaches in dealing with all superheroes. Like just imagine all the headaches that Homelander causes for them. Now imagine that times like a thousand. That's why Vought was using the woods for in the first place to develop a virus to control superheroes but not to kill them. They also confirmed that Marie's mystery benefactor was Victoria Newman and the reason why she helped her get into Godolkin was because she had a soft spot for her because she also has blood bending powers and came up through Red River. But really as she revealed to her she was just doing her solid short term, long term Victoria Newman sounds like she wants to put Marie on the seven and use her position and influence as a powerful superhero to help Victoria Newman do whatever she wants to do in the future. Basically creating her own little cabal of superheroes that will just do whatever she tells them to do. They also reveal the nature of Victoria Newman's powers. It's more than just head popping. She has regular blood bending powers, but they don't get too deep into the weeds on how powerful she is. I think the idea is that Marie is meant to be more powerful than she is. Maybe they'll have a blood bending battle like Avatar The Last Airbender during the finale where Victoria Newman is trying to use her powers and Marie tries to neutralize her while she's using her powers too. That was literally the plot of one of the Avatar The Last Airbender episodes. There are also a couple of teasers for The Boys Season 4 that she dropped during her conversations. I'll talk about those when we get to that part of the episode. The Scooby Gang make their plan to deal with the Dean using Kate's access. Marie and Jordan split off to go to her office and get more details, accidentally getting more information than they planned on from a very drunk Cardoza. They set up this whole arc for Kate in the episode where she kind of goes off the deep end and starts acting more like a villain. Normally I would say she's an Emma Frost X-Men parody, but there were a couple of moments in the trailer for the finale that seemed like they were direct parodies of scenes from X-Men Dark Phoenix with Jean Grey going full Phoenix. Jordan and Marie pass by a ton of easter eggs and references to the boys main series in the seven characters. There's posters for an A-Train ad for a meal replacement drink. This isn't Turbo Rush, it's meant to be some other company called Henderson. There's the campaign poster for Victoria Newman and Robert Singer giving them the idea to go to her with the evidence of the weapon. The whole Soup Lives Matter is a reference to Black Lives Matter in real life and there are a ton of posters of the seven characters just in general like this is a Black Noir poster, RIP. It seems like they're ads for Apple parody products of Vought stuff. We'll see if Black Noir winds up coming back in some way during the boys season 4 or like the boys season 5. They can actually legit do that. Like in the comics, Vought actually is able to bring Compound V superheroes back to life by just dosing them with more Compound V. But when they come back to life, they're kind of like mindless shells. But that was already kind of the way they were using the Black Noir character. Like he was sort of a finger puppet for Stan Edgar. This one's Homelander, this one's Crimson Countess. There's a lot of Crimson Countess all over the boys' Gen V series, but that's mostly because they named the theater school after her. There's also another A-Train ad for a beer brand that they're drinking later in the episode that I'll point out. The joke here though with them going to Victoria Newman instead of Vought though is that they think Vought will spin things to their benefit, lie to the public, which is totally true. Ashley does that all the time. They've been posting all kinds of boys season 4 promos with her doing that. Mostly about Homelander standing trial for killing that dude at the end of season 3, which they also referenced during this episode too. But the big twist that obviously they haven't figured out yet is that Victoria Newman is just as bad as Vought and for a long time she was working for Vought for Stan Edgar when he was still at Vought in order to try and gain a foothold in the White House and gain control over the government so that Vought could control public policy. Like that would give them real power if they could actually influence laws that were created. They could basically do whatever they want and get away with anything they wanted to. First it started out with Vought trying to get superheroes in the military, now it's Vought trying to get superheroes in the White House and into the government. That's why when Marie reveals everything to her she's like, you know what, I'll take care of it, don't worry, and she's going to take care of it but in her own way where she spins things to her benefit and lies to the public the same way that Vought would do. It's just now that Victoria Newman is serving her own interests and not so much Vought's interests. It's just that sometimes her interests happen to be aligned with Vought's interests. She's meant to be a parody of the AOC character so that the show could parody both conservatives like the alt-right in America and also parody the left politically. We're talking about American politics here like everybody in different countries has their own version of this dichotomy. But the boys TV show is taking shots at both sides saying that the left and the right are equally bad, no one is better than the other. That's why during the episode she wears the blue colors for the political left and Cameron wears red for the political right because the show is meant to be a parody of conservative right wing talk shows. The other funny detail too is that she wears blue to reference that she is a Compound V superhero secretly working for Vod, and Compound V is blue. 
like metaphorically and literally she's showing her true colors. Their couple funny moments with Emma and Sam hiding out in her dorm room, her banter about casual everyday superhero life sounds pretty accurate to what it would be like if superheroes like this actually existed. Like, there's a dude in my class that I know that will burn all our stuff, he has pyro powers, all we gotta do is give him some drugs. You have to imagine if kids with superpowers like this existed and they were regulated or not regulated the way that they aren't in the boys universe, people would act like this all the time. Just using your powers for all kinds of everyday mundane stuff. They make a reference to her starlight vibrator. There was a joke about those kinds of toys during the boys season three. The whole idea is that Vought will merchandise literally any part of their superheroes, anything at all, just to make more money. And when Sam starts pawing through all of her stuff, like her underwear drawer, all that stuff around her room, it's meant to be referenced back to Homelander doing the same thing during the boys season two, because both of them are kind of mentally and emotionally stuck in this childhood state because they were both treated the same way growing up, growing up in isolation, basically locked up when they were children. It's basically why Homelander's so messed up in present day. Inside the dean's office, the painting above the door is of Godolkin, the man who founded the college, which they later reveal was a clinical psychologist for Vought who created the school as a front just for studying Compound V superheroes. So the whole joke is that you don't come to the school to learn, the school brings you there so that it can study you. That's also why there's a painting of Woods next to his painting to reference the Woods facility underneath the college. But if it wasn't clear, he founded the college working for Vought, so like it was Vought that actually started the college. They find the Dean's records of the flight that Homelander destroyed, the names of her daughter, her husband listed on the passenger list, confirming they died because of what Homelander did. The whole idea of Cardoza barging in all drunk I think is kind of convenient, mostly so that the kids can actually learn what's going on with the virus, like fatal, what's going on, contagious, oh my god we gotta do something about this. But here's the thing, the other thing he does in here is basically piss in her alcohol bottle. I'm hoping that they pay that off in the finale by having somebody accidentally drink that. Maybe someone like Rufus, because Rufus said that he worked inside the Dean's office, and if you're gonna have someone take that L, why not make it be Rufus, just because he's such a dirtbag. Then we get our next big cameo scene from the boys' main series. Shetty meets with Mallory, hoping to get her help with her plan to kill all superheroes. During their conversation, she also references Butcher and the boys. A man who works for me, one of your fellow countrymen, although I doubt you travel in the same circles, has this same rage. It's so consumed him that there's nothing left. After the conversation, she speaks to someone on her comm who was listening in saying that they should tail the Dean. That could have been Butcher that she was talking to, so he might have a cameo at some point during the finale or other boys' characters. Probably Homelander too, just because they reference Homelander so many times in this episode. The reason why Mallory doesn't want her weapon is because she doesn't want to commit genocide, and that's basically what she's talking about doing, killing all superheroes, and there are a lot of Compound V superheroes that have lame powers or like barely any powers and aren't really doing anything or causing any kind of collateral damage. It's really only like a small chunk of them that are super destructive in the really bad ones. Shetty also says they need 10 more months to make the virus contagious and airborne, so because Victoria Newman gets it at the end of the episode, I think the idea is that it hasn't become airborne yet. Like, it's still very dangerous, but not nearly as dangerous as the Dean wanted to make it. There are a couple funny moments with Sam getting caught up in the party in the hallway, swept up in the fun of just being a normal kid, just having a good time, not being worried about someone trying to rip him apart or experiment on him or lock him up. It's not totally clear why Rufus lies to him about Emma. He might have just been trying to mess with him for fun. Like, he just wanted to have fun by messing with anybody, and he just happened to walk in with his field of vision. Like, yeah, sure, Emma's over at the place where we're going. I don't think Rufus was playing any kind of four-dimensional chess or anything like that. Or had some secret plot. He was just messing with him. Zoom and Enhance, when they're partying there, the beer that they're drinking is the same brand as A-Train's advertisement earlier in the episode. Probably a brand that Va owns. One of the other jokes, too, about the Boys series is, like, all the different products that you see people using are owned by Vought in some way. Like, they keep referencing Vought a burger in the episodes. Then when Andre's father, Polarity, has his freak out losing control of his powers, I think the idea is that he's having a bad reaction to Compound V, like he's having a heart attack, basically. They kind of got into this whole phenomenon with A-Train's heart during the Boys Season 3. The whole idea is that Compound V is super volatile. It kills most people who take it, even the younger children. If you survive the initial treatment and get powers, you can take more of it in small doses with all kinds of crazy side effects. Like some people use it as a regular drug, some people use it to enhance their powers, more like A-Train was. The more you do that, the more of a toll it takes on your body, like real world performance enhancing drugs. So early theory, that's kind of what's going on with Andre's father, like his body is just shutting down because of a bad compound V reaction. They basically use this plot to reunite Andre with him, and I think they're trying to imply that had he not left Kate, Kate would not have flown off the deep end. 
they basically wind up taking him to Vought's doctors at Vought Tower. That's where they're at in these scenes here. There's like a real brief funny moment before things get really crazy where Emma accidentally cock blocks Maverick who's in the middle of something really nasty with that donkey of his who's kind of his girlfriend. I'm still not totally clear if that's like a compound B superhero that just looks like a donkey or it's just a regular old donkey. You can let me know in the comments like is that just a regular donkey. Then at the political conference most of these parodies are pretty obvious like Rufus's red hat is a reference to Trump's make America great slogan. The superhero students start to riot because they buy into Victoria Newman's rhetoric and her lies thinking that she's anti-superhero because she's kind of there representing the FBSA which was the agency that they created to regulate superheroes. But the whole idea is that she lies like she makes everybody think that she doesn't have compound V superpowers. They reference Stormfront's tirade during season 2 then Soldier Boy's damage in season 3. Then they start teasing stuff for the boys season 4. So one of the students asks about Homelander standing trial for killing that dude at the end of season 3. Victoria Newman suggests that he will. So you have to imagine like Batman v Superman where Superman attends Congress. The only problem with something like that though is Homelander would never let anyone put him in prison. Like he would flip out and destroy everything in sight before something like that happened. They even teased that earlier on the boys when he was with Victoria Newman. The other big teaser for season 4 is that Victoria Newman says that when she becomes vice president like she's very sure of this the government is going to create a position for superheroes for someone like Homelander to sit on a council with her and other government leaders like the president, the vice president and have a say in public policy. That's Vought's true goal like that was Stan Edgar's goal to basically get a foothold in the White House so they could influence public policy because if Vought could control the government like get superheroes in the government they could basically get away with anything that they want. There's a ton of powers they show off when the kids start riding. Most of them are parodies of X-Men powers like there's a sonic scream like Havoc or Banshee. There's some laser eyes. This girl who was ice sliding with Sam earlier has purple glowing eyes. There's a girl with green fire. She seems like more of a Green Lantern parody. When things really start getting crazy Rufus references Homelander again just making it seem like he will cameo in the finale. And Jordan helps Marie sneak into the conference by distracting the guards with the brawl. She starts with the girl who exposed Emma for clout on her social media just clocking the hell out of her. The Victoria Newman basically reveals everything to Marie. I've already talked a little bit about this during the video but the idea is that she went to Red River. She helped her get into Godolkin because she was trying to do her solid but also set her up as somebody that she could use in the future as muscle. Basically creating her own team of loyal superheroes that will just do whatever she tells them to do. She basically explains her long term plan for Marie is to get her on the 7 and use that power to their benefit and also she'd be able to use that to find her sister. They keep teasing her sister but they might save that for season 2. We'll see if Marie actually winds up getting a shot and making it onto the 7. They've already renewed the show for season 2 and they're calling it sophomore year so like she still has a number of years left in college to finish before she would join the 7. Then Kate goes full Emma Frost white queen on Dean Shetty forcing her to reveal everything to the Scooby gang then kill herself and she goes to the dorms with another group of superheroes that are getting worked up from the conference to try and cause some real damage and destroy the woods. This might be how they explain Homelander showing up during the finale like the whole idea is that the kids start causing so many problems that Vought can't ignore it like they can't hide it so they might wind up sending some of the seven like Homelander in to put the kibosh on it. Homelander basically squishing a couple of the kids until they all chill out. Then we get that quick tag scene at the end with Victoria Newman tricking Cardoza into handing over the virus and killing him by popping his head. R.I.P. Like I said earlier the theory right now is that she'll just use it as a deterrent but it might become a big plot point during the finale. The other early theory is that she might use it to try and kill Homelander but I think she has bigger plans for it like she wants to keep it around just in case she might need it in the future. Just in case anybody gets in her way. There were a bunch of easter eggs and references in the episode so if you spotted any that I didn't talk about in the video just write them below in the comments in my full finale video we'll post next week after they release it. They haven't said when the boys season 4 is going to premiere. My assumption is going to be sometime like spring or summer next year but for the most part season 4 is about done like it's kind of sitting on a shelf they're polishing the special effects and that's about it. We're in the middle of Loki season 2 episodes right now but like the next real big thing that's going to start next week is Invincible season 2 and it's probably one of the best superhero series next to the boys. Click here for my full Loki season 2 episode 4 video and click here for my Invincible season 2 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.